That's my intro. Oh. Oh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I, I have a, a, um, I'm going to talk in, in three parts, and I've got notes here. I'm not going to read the notes, but they're just to give me a, a, a clue what, what I'm going to say. And, the, and the, the first notes is uh, art and beer. The second note is philosophy. The second notes is uh, philosophy and religion. And the third note is um, food, food jokes. Yeah. So, and. Um, and I, if I, this is something I, I think you'd be interested in. I just got this on, uh, online. This is reading, reading glasses. It's like a, a credit card, see? And it comes out like this. And then it just clips on like this. And you can read, read with it. No, no, they're just like uh, regular, regular glasses. Yeah. Beer, art, and philosophy, okay. Uh, so, um, how, many, how many people believe in t telekinesis? Raise my hand. <laughs> you know, if you, you probably watched the, the inauguration on TV of, of Donald Trump, and they used two Bibles because they, because they were afraid one of them would burst into flames. <laughs> and Kellyanne Conway invented alternative facts, and talking to her is like, opening a door and that door handle comes off in your hand. <laughs> Jeff Sessions, you know, the 200-year-old cracker, he lied, you know. And then um, and, and, and the liberal, liberal Democrats won't ever use the word lie. They always say untruth or something else like that, you know. <laughs> so this morning, I'm reading um, uh, the, the new New Yorker magazine. And there's a review of a new movie that just came out called Kong, uh, Skull Island. And Anthony Lane is the, the movie critic who writes about it. And so my wife is reading the New York Times, and I'm reading the San Francisco Chronicle. And I always finish much sooner than she does, because the Chronicle is only four pages long, you know. So, um, so this, is, this is a quote that, that I was reading in there. And she thought I was talking about Donald, Donald Trump. And it's, it's about this movie, you know, about a, it's kind of a modern King Kong movie. It says, not to give the game away, a large primate who has made absolutely no effort to meet with his therapist and neither the ride nor the film will be content until you go, in the richest sense of the phrase, apeshit. <laughs> this, this room has a great feng shui. It has great uh, proportions, you know. So the universe is really present in the form of proportion in this, in this room, you know. And I've noticed that this, everything in this room is gradually turning yellow. And, and you'll, you'll notice it in a few minutes. And <laughs> so... Um, this is, this is a quote from uh, Henry David Thoreau. He says, the gods are looking down on the people in the tavern. That's a real quote from him. Confucius said, is it not delightful to have friends coming from distant quarters? And I have an artist club every Wednesday that people come. And that's, that's, that's how I feel about the, what Confucius said. Yeah. So anyway, I'm a, to tell you a little bit about myself, I'm a first generation conceptual artist. That's you know, like from the late 60s and the early 70s. You know? And conceptual artists are free to work in any medium except painting. You know? But someday, I'm going to retire from art and take up painting. You know? <laughs> and uh, the, other, the other two things, the, the, the other two works uh, I'm most known for, um, One Second Sculpture from 1969, where I threw a metal tape measure in the air, and uh, it fell to the ground, and, and it existed for one second, made the sound and everything, you know. And now that, that's become a, a piece that I'm known for. And also, the one I'm most known for is the act of drinking beer with friends is the highest form of art, which I did in the Oakland Museum in 1970. And now I've been doing it ever since, literally all around the world. So one time I'm, I'm talking to a group and I'm, I'm explaining about my beer with friends, you know, and somebody said, I do that all the time with my friends. Is, is, that, is that art? And I said, no, it's a copy of my art. <laughs> <laughs> here's, a, here's a quote from Benjamin Franklin. He says, proof, um, a beer is proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy. So one time, it, I, you know, the Anchor Steam Beer used to be a, a, a sponsor of mine. They would always give beer at one time. And there was a tour one time and, um, of people going through the Anchor Brewing Company. And there was a big vat of, vat of beer that a guy um, uh, climbed up and fell in, the, fell in the vat and he drowned. So the owner, Fritz Maytag, had to go to the guy's um, hotel to tell his wife that, that the guy had drowned. And she says, well, I hope it, at least he went quick. And he said... No, he got out three times to pee. <laughs> so, 
some, 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 sometimes when I'm traveling, people ask me, what, what do you do? And I say, I make psychic sculpture. And they say, what is that? And I say, it'll come to you. <laughs> so a, a couple more things about, about what, I, what I do. In the, in, the, in the late 60s, I was in the Peace and Freedom Party. And in 1970, I founded the Museum of Conceptual Art. And then uh, I founded the Vision Magazine and uh, the Art Orchestra. And uh, I have supported artists. And do you think I'm known for all that? No. And you fuck one sheep. <laughs> I, have a, I have a theory that in the seventh year of every decade, the next decade is, is predicted. You know? so like, for instance, in, in uh, 1907, Picasso invented Cubism. 1917, Duchamp exhibited his, his uh, famous urinal called Fountain, and that became the beginning of the, of the Dada era. In uh, 1917, Thomas Hart Benton established the, the movement called Regionalism, which was, which was the art of the, of the 1920s. 1937, Theodore, um, not Theodore, uh, FDR, Roosevelt, uh, established the, the uh, WPA, the Works Project, and that was the beginning of the, of, of, of the uh, uh, social realism. 1947, Jackson Pollock did his first drip paintings, first abstract dick painting, and that was the beginning of abstract expressionist painting. 1957, Jasper Johns and Robert Rauschenberg did the first pop art painting, which became the art of the, of the 60s. 1967, um, Saul LeWitt wrote his famous sentences on conceptual art, and uh, that became the beginning of the conceptual art period, which was the art of the, of the 70s. 1977, Julian Schnabel, um, did his famous uh, broken plate paintings, and that was the beginning of the first neo period of neo expressionist painting, and painting returned because the period of the 70s was uh, about uh, um, more of uh, a philosophic kind of art, and um, then in the 80s uh, it was art about money, and so then painting returned in, 19, in the 1980s. 1987, Jeff Koons, who was a neo pop artist, and, uh, and it was the next neo movement, and that was the beginning of a kind of, uh, of return to, to pop art. In 1997, there was a Belgian artist and a Russian artist who claimed to have invented internet art. And that was the art of the last, last decade of the, I mean the first decade of the, of the uh, 21st century. In 2007, I had a show at the Paula Anglum Gallery of all circles, and I invented circleism 100 years after Picasso invented cubism. <laughs> Okay, I need the other glasses for this. I, I wrote a letter in 2005 uh, to, the, to the New York Times, uh, uh, and this gives you a, a sense of uh, where I'm coming from as, as an artist. And it's, it was about Marina Abramovich re, 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 uh, recreating uh, art, different artists' performances from the 1970s. And um, so they set it up, and then I go on to say, in the 1970s, I was in performance festivals in Europe with both artists, and they are both great artists, referring to Chris Burden and Marina Abramovich. But I don't blame Mr. Burden for refusing to even discuss with Mr. Bramovich having his work, recre work recreated. The performance art of the early 1970s was concrete. We made one-time sculpture actions. If Mr. Burden's work were recreated by another artist, it would be turned into theater, one artist playing the role of another. So, um, you know, some of these, most of these jokes I've stolen and changed and everything, you know. And so um, uh, it's okay to, uh, if you steal from one person, it's plagiarism, but to steal from many is research. <laughs> uh, the, uh, about, yeah, about 15 years ago, the uh, art, art critic came to my studio to look at my work and I said, uh, what is your opinion of my work? And he said, it's worthless. And I said, I know, but I'd like to hear it anyway. <laughs> This, this, is, this, this is another thing about critics. It's written by Mark, this was written by Mark, Mark Twain. He said a recently, it's about a recently de, uh, deceased critic. He says, I did not attend his funeral, but I wrote a nice letter saying I approved of it. <laughs> so this artist comes home and he finds that his house has been burned down. And the fire, firemen are there and he says, uh, what happened? And the fireman says, well, the museum director came to your house Burn, uh, murdered your family and burned your house down. And the artist says, you mean the, the, uh, the museum director came to my house? <laughs> video, video art is a medium because it is neither rare or well done. 
Here's an here's a, uh, interesting quote by Rob, Robert Hughes, the great art, art critic. Uh, he said, Jeff Koons is so overexposed that, when it, it, that it loses nothing in reproduction and gains nothing in the original. Uh-huh. And this, this is something I wrote. Men become, become artists because they want to express their female side, except Richard Serra. <laughs> so, I don't know, it was about uh, uh, several years ago, I can't remember exactly when it was, I was in the Original Joe's, which is my favorite restaurant in North Beach. It's just up on Union Street in, in Columbus, you know. And I'm, and I'm going in there and having lunch with some of my friends. And Bill Clinton is in there at the other end of the restaurant. So I go up to him and I say, I introduce myself and I say, you know, you'd do me a big favor if on your way out, you'd say hello to me. And I'd, I'd really be a big favor to me and I could really impress my friends, you know. So we're eating lunch and Bill Clinton comes walking out. He comes right up to, to my table. And he says, hello, Tom. And I said, not now, Bill. Can't you see I'm eating? A <laughs> <laughs> uh, f- few Germans know this, but Mrs. Hitler used to comb her pussy hair to the right to honor her husband. <laughs> Is that too much? <laughs> So this is, this is one of my favorite cartoons that I cut out. It was in the, it was in the New Yorker a couple, about a year ago. And it's, I have to describe it because uh, it, you can't see it. It says, and it's called Afghanistan Terrorist School. And there's a big sign that says human bomb class. And there's four um, you know, Muslim terrorists. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And so the, the main guy, the teacher, he's got a bomb strap, strapped to his, to, his, st- to his stomach. And he's holding a, a, a a detonator in his hand like this, and he says, pay attention because I'm only going to do this once, okay? <laughs> okay, this is, this is something serious, and this, this will be the end of the first, uh, first section. Um, and this is an artist statement I wrote for, the, for an exhibition in the Oakland Museum called What is Art For? in 1999. For beauty, for history, for decorating apartments, for people to laugh at, for imitating nature, for therapy, for seeing in a new way, for an educated audience, for enlightenment, for political agendas, for glorifying the church in the Renaissance, for glorifying the state in communism, for glorifying the rich in capitalism, for recording society in a poetic way. So that's the first part of, of, the, of the talk, and then, then I'm going to tell you the second part. Okay. Okay, the second part is uh, uh, philosophy and religion, you know. A philosopher is a person with no job, but he understands why. (laughs) Can I have an amen? (laughs) Philosophy has questions that may never be answered. Religion has answers that may never be questioned. The secret to success is always be honest. If you can fake it, you've got it made. I was a child prodigy. At three, I drew a perfect circle. At four, I painted like Picasso. At five, I understood Duchamp. At 5.30, I went down to the bar and had a whiskey and a cigar. (laughs) Yeah, welcome. Are you the guy that was outside that I told to come in? (laughs) Okay, Okay, thank you. so I have, I have a theory that, that everybody sees the, has an idea of what the point of art is, depending on what they do. For instance, a philosopher's idea about art is that it's something to analyze, you know. A writer usually thinks that the purpose of art is to illustrate stories. So it should be pictorial, it should be representational, because writers think of art as illustration for stories, generally. Not all writers, of course, you know. And architects see art as, as abstract because they see it as ornamentation for architecture. So everybody has a, a, a different idea about what the purpose of art is, you know. So anyway, um, this guy goes to, um, goes to a Buddhist hot dog stand, and he says, make me one with everything. <laughs> then, he gives, then he gives the, gives the guy a $20 bill, and, and, he, and he waits, and he says, where's my change? And the guy says, change comes from within. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
The French philosopher René Descartes, he goes into a bar and the guy says, would you like a beer? And he says, I think not, and he disappeared. <laughs> I feel sorry for atheists. They have no one to talk to when they're getting a blowjob. <laughs> oh, boo. <laughs> How many Freudian analysts does it take to change a light bulb? One to hold the penis, I mean the ladder. <laughs> I know I'm God because when I pray to him, I realize I'm talking to myself. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Jack. <laughs> so a missionary was up in, the, up in uh, Alaska and, he, and, he, and, he, and, and, and an Eskimo says to him, um, if I didn't know about uh, God or sin, would I go to hell? And the, and the priest says, not if you didn't know. And he says, well, why did you tell me? <laughs> okay, I've got a couple of poems here now. Um, 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 I, I wrote a, a haiku poem, and uh, one time I read, I read it to uh, Lawrence Ferlinghetti. He asked me if I ever wrote, it, wrote any poetry. I said, I only wrote one poem. And he said, well, I know poets who so have made a whole career on one poem. You know. Anyway, so here it is. Haiku poetry has 17 syllables, Tom Marioni. <laughs> very didactic, very didactic. So here's another haiku poem. Um, da Vinci, Duchamp, John Cage, Boys and Brancusi, Klein and Picasso. Now I have all the pictures of these artists on the wall over my bar in my studio. And the reason, the reason they're up there is because they all invented something. Leonardo invented automation. Duchamp invented conceptual art. John Cage invented The Happening. Joseph Beuys invented uh, social sculpture. Ron Cousy invented abstract sculpture. Yves Klein invented invisible art. And Picasso invented collage. So they're, they're, I think of them as, as my teachers, and that's why I hang their pictures up on, on my studio. Uh, the, here's a couple of, of short, short poems that I wrote. Um, this one's called Movies. Lights, camera, action, cut, print. This one's called TV. New, this one's called Newsbreak. This is Tom Marioni at five and six on seven, film at 11, and now this. <laughs> Here's some interesting statistics. In the US, 90% believe in God. 40% believe in creationism. 81% believe in heaven and hell. 29% of Republicans believe Obama is a Muslim. That, I, I read that somewhere, yeah. Um, about 10 years ago, I, I was at a, a a concert that, uh, of John Cage's 433, which is four minutes and 33 seconds of silence, you know, that he wrote in 1952. And after about a minute, there's a woman I heard in the stage wish, whisper say, I still can't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in the 1980s, I made a, a, several trips to China and Japan. And, um, and, in, um, and I studied uh, Chinese calligraphy. I learned how to write a, a, lot, a lot of words, not, not a lot, but the words I, I like because I like the way, the, the way they looked. For instance, when you write music, it's two characters. It's sound and harmony. And it and kind of describes um, the word. It's, it's described when you, when you write it, when you read it, you know. And the other one, my favorite, was how you write art in Chinese in a kind of script. The, the character on the left is beauty, and the one on the right is skill. And I see it as uh, the beauty is female and the skill is, is male. And it looks like, to me, a man and a woman dancing together, and the man is turning the woman around, and her skirt is flowing like that. So, so when you think of, of skill and art, it kind of describes uh, what art is, you know. And speaking of art, these, these two, these two, um, this Chinese couple was in bed, and the husband says to the wife, "Can we do 69 tonight?" And the wife says, "You mean you want beef and broccoli now?" <laughs> Okay. Bertrand Russell was lecturing one time on the origin of the universe, and, um, and he, he wanted to know how it was knowable. The woman says, I know the answer. Universe is re the universe is resting on a turtle. And he says, what is the turtle resting on? And she says, it's turtles all the way down. A friend, a friend uh, said to me the other day, uh, what is a Freudian slip? And I said, well, it's when you say one thing, but you really mean something else. And he said, yeah, that happened to me last week. I was having breakfast with my wife. And I, I said, please pass the, the salt. And instead, I said, you fucking bitch, you ruined my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
The, psychiat the psychiatrist uh, that was a friend of Mickey Mouse's, um, Mickey Mouse hires him to go and talk to Minnie Mouse to find out, you know, what's going on with her, you know. And so uh, a week later, the psychiatrist comes back to Mickey Mouse and he says, you're right, Mickey, Minnie is crazy. And he said, I didn't say she was crazy. I said she was fucking goofy. <laughs> Uh, this, this is a, a nice quote from Saul LeWitt, you know, the famous great artist. He says, photography makes the grand trivial and the trivial grand. Isn't that true? You know, down on Mission Street, around uh, 11th and Mission, there's a trophy store. I walked in there, I looked around, and I thought, this guy is good. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this uh, reporter from the, from the CNN Here's about a guy in, in Israel who goes to the Wailing Wall every day for 40 years. And, and so she, wants, she goes to interview him and, and she, gets, she gets there and she, go, he, she goes to the Wailing Wall where the guy is praying and she says to him, what, what are you doing? And he says, I'm praying for peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians, Palestinians so my children can grow up in a, in a, in a better world. And, and she says, well, how do you feel about that? And he says, I feel like I'm talking to a fucking wall. <laughs> So, so this, this Jewish grandmother, she's in the, in the garment district in New York, and a flasher runs up to her and opens his coat and exposes himself, and she says, you call that a lining? <laughs> That's a classic, classic Jewish joke. I've been reading this book on anti-gravity, and I can't put it down. You know. I'd kill for a Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> This actor's doing, doing a terrible job with, with Hamlet, you know. He's murdering it, and people are throwing, throwing fruit at him and booing him and hissing, and he stops, and he turns to the audience, he says, I don't write this crap. <laughs> okay, this is, something, this is something about Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci made art a branch of knowledge rather than an instrument of religion. He, he wrote a music score based on the sounds do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do that are in syllables in the Italian language and turned them into notes of an octave. Love only makes me remember was the first sentence he wrote that he turned into a musical score. Leonardo was a conceptual artist and the son of God. I'm surprised I have to point this out. You know, this teacher was teaching, teaching her children uh, and she says, there's no language where a double positive is a negative. And the student says, yeah, right. Okay, now this is something serious again here. So this is something I wrote in 1991. For, uh, I was, uh, it was a report on the Central Embarcadero Project for the city of San Francisco. Sculpture is about the relationship of forms and space. It should grace the landscape, not be symmetrical. Use the geometry of nature. Have good proportions. Be controversial at first. Become a thing of pride to the public. Have a subject. Make a point. Be symbolic of something not be generic abstract. It should be sensitive to where it is. Work with its neighboring objects. Emphasize local character. Have a social element. Use shadows. Be a spirit in the dark. It is an object that draws you to it. Has poetry or technological information. Predicts the future. All, uh, allows your imagination to travel to the past. It should bring people up to the level of art. Fight against a world of standardization. Have layers of meaning. Be open to interpretation. Not be painted red, a little red goes a long way. It should have more than one side. Not emit obnoxious sounds. Consider acoustics, reject vandalism, encourage participation. Okay, thank you. This is the end of part two, philosophy and religion. <laughs>Okay, these notes, these notes are about, they're general, general jokes, and, uh, and I didn't know uh, what to call them, but there's some jokes about food in here. Since we're all mostly foodies here in San Francisco, you know, you know there, 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 there's three food critics on the San Francisco Chronicle and only one art critic. That's, that's, how, 
That's how important food is compared to art in this city here. So the last time I, fl I flew down here from, um, from, from Seattle, and I said I want, I had three, three pieces of luggage, and I said I want this one to go to Sacramento, and I want this one to go to San Jose, and I want this one to go to San Francisco, and they said you can't do that, and I said you did it last week. <laughs> and then I'm on the airplane, and uh, the stewardess says in case of air pressure, the, uh, uh, the oxygen mask will fall down in an emergency for $3. <laughs> you know why babies cry on airplanes? Because they're, they're, they're uh, they're unhappy about a gay, gay marriage. <laughs> so anyway, I'm on the airplane and there's a, a, a little boy in the back of me kicking my seat through the whole flight, you know. Keeps kicking my seat and at, and, and at that point I, I was in, in favor of late term abortion up to the fifth grade. <laughs> back in the, back in, the, uh, in the 70s, I had a, 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 a hippie girlfriend, you know. She was into psychedelics and, uh, and, uh, and um, you know, and, and, and wore tie-dye clothes, and, and she, she said, we, we are one with the universe, we're one body, we're, we're, we're one person, you know, and I says, well, how about paying a little t attention to our dick? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boo, yeah. <laughs> so, I saved the, the good ones for the, la for the la end, yeah. Okay, you know, I saw on TV that for 70 cents you can feed a starving child in Africa, but for, for $2.99, uh, you can, uh, a minute, you can have somebody talk dirty to you uh, on, the, on, the, on the telephone. So I was thinking that if you had one of the starving children talk dirty to you, you could feed hundreds of them for, for, for two ninety nine. you know. <laughs> Did you know 42.7% of all statistics are made up on the spot? <laughs> Why are hemorrhoids called a uh, hemorrhoids instead of asteroids? <laughs> This guy goes into a bar and he announces, all lawyers are assholes. And the guy at the end of the bar says, I resent that. And he says, why, are you, are, are you a lawyer? And he says, no, I'm an asshole. <laughs> I want to see beer come out of your noses. <laughs> a friendship is like, uh, like, like peeing on yourself. Everybody can see it, but only you get the warm feeling. I go to the doctor and the doctor says, you only have uh, three minutes to live. And he says, can you do anything for me? He says, I can boil you an egg. <laughs> <laughs> so so I went in the, I went in the, the, uh, the, the kitchen and I asked the, the, the chef, how do you prepare your, your chickens? And he says, nothing special. I'll just tell them they're going to die. <laughs> do you, I just read recently that there are more chickens in the world than there are people. That's true. You know, it was so windy yesterday, I saw a chicken lay the same egg six times. These two cannibals were, were, were eating a clown, and one of them turns the other and says, does this taste funny to you? <laughs> About 10 years ago, you know, uh, Mother Teresa died on the same day that Princess Di, you know. And they, and they both went to heaven at the same time, and they're up, they're up in heaven, and, and, that Saint Pe and Saint Peter's there. And Mother Teresa says to Saint Peter, you know, I, I ministered to the poor, I did the Lord's work all my life, and uh, they're even talking about making me a saint, and, uh, and Princess Di was a good person, but I think I did m many more works for the Lord than Princess Di did, and I want to know is how, how come Princess Di has a halo and I don't? And then Saint Peter says, that's not a halo, it's a steering wheel. Boo, boo. Is this an audience or an oil painting? <laughs> so the nun, nun is in the, in the convent. She goes in to, the, to tell the mother superior that I'm sorry to report that we have a case of syphilis. And the mother superior says, oh, I'm so relieved. I was getting so tired of the Chablis. <laughs> This Polish guy goes, goes to the, goes to the uh, eye doctor and the, doctor, the eye doctor says to the Polish guy, can you read the third line down there, the one that says XK3JPSKI? Can you read that? He says, read it, I know him. <laughs> <laughs> Patient goes in to see a psychiatrist and he says, uh, nobody pays any attention to me. And the psychiatrist says, next. <laughs> guy goes to the doctor, he says, I have five penises. And the doctor says, how do your pants fit? He says, like a glove. <laughs> 
He gets in the doctor's office and he says, when I sneeze, I have an orgasm. He says, you taking anything for it? And he says, yeah, ground pepper. <laughs> now I'm going to say something warm and gracious. Gracious it's warm in here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Anybody have anything they want me to say? <laughs> oh, I, I, I know some of you already have my books, but I have, I have three uh, beer art and philosophies, and, 